right, everyone. What is up here today, YouTube? Jigsaw0097. As you guys might see, I'm wearing a Spider-Man beanie, which means I'm not talking about football in this video. I'm going to be talking about my review for Avengers Endgame. This is just going to be my quick thoughts about it. Um, for many people, maybe myself included, um, this this is like kind of the, the ending to um, the 10 years of Marvel movies that we've had. Um, and keep in mind, guys, this is going to be a heavy spoiler video. I'm literally going to go over the entire plot so that I can tell you guys what I liked and what I didn't like. So if you have not seen the movie right now, I would suggest clicking away, coming back um, after you've seen the movie. You know, put this in your saved list, your watch later list, whatever, um, because I'm going to be spoiling the crap out of it. But anyway, to continue what I was saying, in many ways, this is the end of the saga for people that started watching in Iron Man 1, which was me. I remember going to the theater with Iron Man 1 and I was just blown away by it. That was a year that we had Iron Man, The Dark Knight, so that was a really good year for superhero movies. You know, th that was before what I like to call nowadays where we're just oversaturated with them. Um, a lot of the times I like to compare superheroes to western movies. Um, of the 1950s because Western movies were getting very tiresome to a lot of people back then. Um, and that's how I feel about Marvel movies and superhero movies in general now is I just think there's just too much of them. We get too many of them a year. They're starting to feel like the Call of Duty of movies where, um, you know, it's just franchise fatigue, I guess. But I started back when they were, they were still great. Like Spider-Man 1 as well, if you want to go way, way back with Tobey Maguire. You know, uh, Michael Keaton in Batman way back when. This was when, in my opinion, when superhero movies were a lot more pure because um, they just focused on their, their singular character, whatever the movie was about, that, like whatever character. And, and, you know, they built it off of that. Now we got these movies where it's like everything has to cross over now and it gets, it gets insane. And, and that's going to be an important point while I'm reviewing this movie because um, while I did like this movie quite a bit, um, it also had some serious flaws and I think that was just due to the fact that there was just so much going on, so many characters to resolve, um, and in ways like the three hour runtime really dragged in some points. So that's this movie is three hours guys, so get ready for that. But anyway, I'll get right into it. So the movie starts off um, with Hawkeye and his family, you know, I guess they, they were not around when all this happened. but. The movie starts off with him with his family and then all of a sudden like his family just turns into dust so they were they were one of the people that um, were affected by Thanos you guys know if you saw Infinity War obviously he snapped his fingers at the end he won every 50% um, of the entire galaxy's population one of the universe's population died um, so it starts off with that and then it does the whole Avengers thing and then we go into Tony Stark he's in the ship with um, I always forget her name, that cyborg girl from the uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy, the one that was like tortured by Thanos. It's um, Gamora's sister. Um, so she is with Tony Stark and I guess they've been in space for a while. Tony Stark is seriously, seriously malnutritioned. He's dying because um, they're running out of oxygen in their ship. But of course Captain Marvel shows up to save him. Um, and I will say Luckily, Captain Marvel doesn't make a lot of appearances in this movie because I don't think she should. This is a movie about the original characters, and so she shows up to save Tony Stark, which makes sense, you know, she's probably like the only one that could do it, just fly out there like that. Um, brings him back, and then he they find out, you know, Pepper's still alive, and, but the Avengers are just kind of distraught because everyone's dead. Um, but real quickly, they figure out that Thanos is where he is. They figure out where he is and they go to the planet. Guys, they kill him like that. Thanos dies like right in the beginning of the movie. Um, and actually Thor's the one that kills him, just chops his head off. Um, pretty, it's actually a pretty brutal scene for a Marvel movie, you know, just, just beheads him. So they kind of resolve that all the way and then they go five years into the future. It goes five years later. And if you guys remember in Ant-Man and the Wasp, um, Ant-Man is, he's just been trapped in like a quantum realm. So I guess they explain it that he's been trapped this whole time. He missed all the action, he missed, um, 
Thanos snapping his fingers. Um, and he comes back and, and he explains that it was only like five hours for him, but it's been five years. So essentially he time traveled because he, he was gone for five hours, but five years went by. And so he comes to the Avengers um, and keep in mind as well, they, they have some scenes that I think are kind of pointless during this time where they, they had Captain America, he was kind of in like a, like a um, self-help group. And these are scenes where you, you, know, you could seriously have cut the running time down because they didn't need to happen. You could have just went right to Ant-Man and then started from there, but they had all these scenes where they were kind of like showing how people were coping with the fact that half the population was dead. Um, and they just had like a scene with Captain America not wanting to give up and then they had some scenes with Black Widow saying, you know, this is all I all I know. It was fine, you know, but it, it just, there's a lot of things in this movie that could have really cut the runtime down if they would have just, you know, tightened it up a little bit. But getting right in, Ant-Man basically explains that he knows how to go back in time. He said he comes up with an idea called a time heist where they're gonna go back in time. And it's very much like Back to the Future 2, if you guys have seen that. And they make they actually make several references to Back to the Future in this movie. But they decide they're gonna go back in time and pick up all the infinity stones while um, like in their original time zone, basically, like where they were where they can remember seeing them in, back in time so that they can bring them back to the future and snap the gauntlet again to bring everyone back. Um, because I forgot to mention, Thanos actually, like he destroyed all the gems after he snapped the finger. Um, when they go to kill him, they find out that. They find out that he had destroyed them, so they were kind of screwed. Um, so that that's the plan. They, they decide to do that and then they go to Tony Stark for this because they know he's like probably the one that can figure it out. He's the smartest of all of them. Um, but Tony Stark has moved on basically. He's finally married Pepper. He has a kid and he just says, no, I don't want to do that because, you know, my future is now secure. Kind of being a selfish a-hole like Tony Stark really normally is, but he's just saying my future is secure. But as the movie goes on, you know, he starts, you know how Tony is, he gets curious. He starts to look into it more and then he decides to do it. Um, but meantime, because he doesn't want to do it at that time, they go to Bruce Banner, who is now, um, he's the Hulk all the time now. He's like Bruce Banner and the Hulk mixed into one, as like one character. He's basically learned how to control the Hulk completely. And so that was kind of actually cool. The CG for the Hulk, really great, um, I thought. One of the best CGs I've seen for like a character in a movie like that he was in Hulk the entire movie he was just like most of the time so you know he kind of says you know he can't figure it out either but they decide to try it anyway they they do a couple attempts with Ant-Man and it's kind of funny you know he goes back in time he comes back as like a baby um, he comes back as like an old man that, that was pretty funny um, but basically right while they're doing that Tony Stark shows up and says he'll do it so he figured it out he made this like little device that you put on your hand that can make it so you can like control it better when you go back in time and they all kind of become Ant-Man it's kind of cool after that like once they once they execute the plan um, they all become Ant-Man and they they put on like that suit and they go back in time together as like three separate teams so they go to different periods and the thing that's cool about it, you know, is you get to see all the events, like you get to see the Battle of New York from 2012 Avengers. Um, you get to see, they go back to like 1970. Um, you get to see that that one chick, I forget her name, the bald monk chick from, uh, from Doctor Strange. You get to see her again. Um, so there, there's kind of some cool Back to the Future 2 moments where they go back in time and they, um, they get to see all these events that we had not seen before from like different angles and stuff like that. You get to see Captain America fight himself, which I think Captain America, he's probably the strongest of the of them. Um, and yeah, now I'll get to the characters. I, I kind of blew through that real quick because I want to get to the characters before I like shut this out or before I end this video. Um, Thor, I think Thor is the easily the weakest point of this movie. Um, and I was saving him for this because 
they made him they made him really fat guys and lazy like I guess after he kills Thanos he goes into like this depression because like everyone's dead Asgard's dead everyone's dead um, and he's been drinking beer or whatever for like I don't know how long five years and he's really fat now which it doesn't make sense he's Thor he's the god of thunder you know he doesn't get fat um, I really just don't like what they did with him. He's the comedic relief, and this started in Ragnarok. This is why I had serious problems with Thor Ragnarok, because they started to treat Thor's mythos and everything about him like a joke. And don't get me wrong, Chris Hemsworth, he's a funny actor. I, I think he was really funny in this movie, and it was funny for a little bit, but he just was this, he stayed this character the whole movie. He was like the dude Lebowski from The Big Lebowski, if you guys have seen that movie. They really played on the fact that he was quite inept nowadays and I don't know I just didn't like it he did have some awesome moments in the end battle which I'll get to but overall I just didn't like the way that they did that um, Captain America like I said I like his resolution and I also like Tony Stark's resolution um, the Hulks they didn't really do much with him he just kind of wandered off I guess um, stayed in, in the, the present, but I'll get to that. So anyway, they go back in time, they get all the Infinity Stones. I'm really fast forwarding this quite a bit, guys. Um, they get all the Infinity Stones and they come back and they snap the finger. The Hulk is the one that has to do it because he's probably the only one that survives, but it severely like wounds him in the process. Like his entire arm gets fried, basically. Um, but they end up snapping the finger and while they were doing this though, um, getting all the stones, Thanos was able to, to get a hold of them. He, he was able to track down what they were doing. So before they snap the finger, Thanos is coming back in time as well. So they snap the finger and bring everyone back, but Thanos has now come in from the past into the future. And so they basically have to fight him again. And this is where it gets into some epic Lord of the Rings stuff, guys. We get this huge battle um, between Thanos Thanos' army and like the Avengers army and there's some really cool scenes there um, there's a couple cringy scenes like when Brie Larson you know gets like feminist power attack going on like all the women superheroes come in for like one scene it was extremely cringy and forced um, if you guys have seen Captain Marvel you kind of know what I'm talking about with um, Brie Larson's agenda with Captain Marvel is just kind of cringy it's like this feminist goal but that was cringy, but everything else was pretty good. It was nice to see, like, again, like I said, all the resolutions for the characters, um, I thought was great, you know, seeing Tony Stark and, and all them. And I'll just kind of get into it now, guys. So while they were getting the stones, Natasha dies. So Black Widow, dead. They resolved her in a really good way, though. If you guys have seen, um, or sorry, not seen, if you guys remember how Gamora died in Infinity War, that's kind of what she had to do. She had to go sacrifice herself to get the uh, Soul Stone again. But they did, you know, it was it was kind of the good the way they, they killed her off because, you know, it was, it made sense, I guess. It made sense for her character. And then the other death is Tony Stark, guys. Tony Stark is now dead. Similar to the way Hugh Jackman went out in uh, Logan. It looks like Downey Jr. is ready to hang it up. And so they found a way to kill him off. Um, what happens is Thanos is fighting everyone, blah, 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 and uh, he's fighting uh, Captain Marvel, and they, they almost made Captain Marvel win the fight, which I would have been really upset, because all these characters, in my opinion, have earned the right to be in this movie. Captain Marvel really doesn't belong in this film at all, um, and to have her show up at the end, you know, she blows up Thanos' entire ship, you know, her power levels are just way too high, um, but... She shows up, she's fighting with Thanos, Thanos swats her away so she doesn't get the kill. And then Tony Stark, you know, dives in at the end and switches the gauntlet. He had made like an Iron Man gauntlet, the one that they used to snap. And so he really quickly like switches the gauntlet with Thanos. And then Thanos like snaps his finger but he realizes, you know, he's wearing a dead gauntlet. And then Tony Stark says, I am Iron Man as he snaps his fingers to save everyone. Which is a kind of cool throwback, you know, it started with Iron Man, it ends with Iron Man. Um, and so I really liked that, but you know, obviously it kills him. Um, and then they have this huge funeral to end the movie. Um, and so that's Tony Stark's resolution. Um, Thor's resolution is he goes 
with the Guardians of the Galaxy to basically, he's, he's part of their crew now. So I guess, I guess Thor's not done really. I think he'll be back because they're making a Guardians 3. They've already announced that, you know, James Gunn is back in the helm or whatever. So I think Thor is just going to be part of them now. So we'll see how that is. Again, this is going to just go off of his comedic relief. That's what Thor's become. They've evolved him into this comic character. Um, like, like the funny guy. So I didn't really like Thor overall, but Captain America, they did great. Like he, there's a scene in the end battle where he gets, he becomes worthy to hold Thor's hammer, which is really awesome. He's like smacking his shield around and it, it, it was really cool. Um, but basically what happens is Captain America has to go back in time now to put all the stones back to where they found them in the future or in the past because otherwise if they don't do that it's going to create like some crazy time paradox thing where it will ruin the future eventually. So he goes back in time but he just decides to stay back in time and so they find him as an old man like immediately after and I guess he had like lived his entire life in the past. Um, he was able to be with Peggy finally, you know, have his life with her and everything like that. Um, it's kind of a plot hole in my mind though because it's like how, how was he able to do that when all of that stuff in the past still had to happen so it's like I guess all of those events in the past happened without Captain America fighting for them during that time they didn't really explain it I don't know if he was with Peggy while he was being Captain America or if he just was Captain America the whole time it didn't or if he was not Captain America sorry it didn't really make sense but overall I do like the way they resolved him because you know that's kind of the way that that's what Captain America wanted I guess that was his that was his way to go out um, and then the Hulk I guess he just stays in the present they don't really show much of him he just they're trying to bring Steve back Steve Rogers back but they can't and so he's just there but the movie literally ends with him kissing Peggy so that's the end of the movie guys um, so yeah overall I give this movie like a I mean, I give it like a 7 out of 10, like I said. There's a, there's a couple scenes in the movie that drag out. You know, they could have run, they could have probably cut the runtime down by about like 15, 20 minutes um, if they would have just tightened it up a little bit. And then also, I don't really like Captain Marvel being in there to bail them out at the end. Um, but I don't, I don't like Thor at all. I don't like what they did with him at all. So yeah, that's kind of what I give it. And, it, and really in many ways to me, it's just a Mar another Marvel movie. Um, but it, it, it was a movie I felt like I had to see because you know I've been there since the beginning, so I wanted to kind of wrap this up um, right. And so now other than like Spider-Man, I don't really have any investment in the MCU anymore. Iron Man kind of was my investment and so was Captain America, but they're both resolved now. So I don't know what's gonna bring me back, honestly, because it's kind of like the beginning of a new era, the end of an era. So anyway, guys, that's my review of it. Like I said, I give it a 7 out of 10. I would recommend you go see this in the theater because, you know, this is an event. Movies like this don't come along very often where they're this big and this hyped. So I recommend going and watching it for that reason alone. But anyway, guys, let me know what you think down below. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. But to all my returning viewers, thank you for watching this video. Um, and this has been Jigsaw0097.